Welcome to MJ Hobby Corner and this is an MJ Gaming Spotlight. Now this spotlight is a very special one because we have Julie. And Julie is going to be more involved with me uh, in the MJ Gaming Spotlights. And mm -hmm. I just want to uh, go over very quickly what a spotlight is. Basically it's my official video for reviewing rules. And it's a very basic overview. Uh, we basically go over the core mechanics of the game, talk about any terrain that we can use, talk about the miniatures, and simply just give you guys an idea what the game's all about. Um, also, I cover mostly indie games, uh, small company games, okay? That's what's traditionally covered in the MJ Gaming Spotlight, okay? So today's game... Today's game is... Space Station Zero. Sorry, I had a little brain freeze there for a moment. <laughs> it's Space Station Zero. The authors are Uncle Adam and Vince... Venturella. Venturella, yes. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Me too. Um, it's, it's a game. It's a, it's a great game, by the way. Um, nice job to both of you. Two thumbs up. Uh, it it's, takes place, obviously, in space where the players have found themselves um, after doing their space jumping and light speed moves um, in a, at a vast, immense space station, immense, like a world. Mm -hmm. Found themselves here at, the, at this immense place and they begin to live their lives there. And um, in, in doing that, they get a little bored at times and so what they what they decided to do is form crews and explore because that's really all there is to do right so they explore this vast place and in doing so they find all sorts of fun things um challenges arise bombs or gas leaks or monsters and villains so that's what that's where the game begins in the exploration of the space station. A good overview of the fluff. As you know, Julie likes her fluff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to close the window a little bit because it is pouring outside. It is raining hard. <laughs> All right, and if you hear stuff in the background, it's because it's pouring out there. So there is a lot of rain falling and so forth. And uh, Yoda, our little dog, likes to come into the studio. You'll hear his footsteps every so often. All right. So now let's get into the mechanics of this game. So uh, what do you need to play? You need, uh, Vince recommends uh, about 10 D12s. So this mm -hmm. is a D12 system. Um, mm -hmm. You will also need the book. You'll need some markers as usual to represent the challenges. You'll need models, of course, to represent your crews, mm -hmm. the monsters. Uh, all of that stuff is stuff you will need. Um, the, uh, this game has a very interesting mechanic, mm -hmm. very interesting mechanic. Um, Julie, you want to go over just very simply, a little bit of it? Well, or? part of the mechanic that I really like is uh, the successes and the failures. Uh -huh. um, it's very simple. You don't have to worry about a target number or anything like that. It's, it's um, simply um, even numbers are successes and odd numbers are failures. That's that. So it's very, very simple. Very simple. Mm -hmm. And so uh, those successes also, you have critical successes, critical right. failures, which are uh, described in the rules. Mm -hmm. And so that gives you a little more interest. Mm -hmm. uh, very important is during the activation, each crew member gets an action. Mm -hmm. And uh, players always activate first. Right. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, especially in the in the solo uh, games and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. That's an important part of the mechanic. Mm -hmm. Another thing with the activation is um, once the player has completed their activation, they roll to see if they re retain right. the activation. So they, instead of it automatically passing to the the opponents you roll the dice and on the first first try doing that you have to roll um anything six or above you retain yet the activation and, and then continue. activate your next your next your next person uh, yeah right right so enemies don't always necessarily go after you is is what i'm saying that mm -hmm. the enemies could go a little later in the turn which gives you 
a, a chance to do stuff with your right, guys. Right. That's an interesting mechanic. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to say. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to creating a cruise since that's a very important part of the game. Uh, here we have these different stats that you need to keep track of. Very few of them, very simple. They're all pretty self-explanatory. You get an explanation uh, in the scenarios of how to use them and for what challenges. Next, you have to create your crew. And this is an uh, not only an important step, but uh, it's also a very interesting mechanic. You have several uh, steps to create your crew. And the first step is choosing your crew type. And we're going to see in a little moment. So you choose your crew type. You also choose your ship type, which is going to dictate what kind of equipment you have, uh, what kind of uh, things your crew do basically and uh, you have to create a commander uh, you will also get an edge which is a special ability so your crew is arranged into little groups based on the size of the crew of your original ship this is going to give you your base stats so uh, there's a little arrow pointing to the base stats so if your ship had eight crew members that's what you would choose uh, you know, six crew members, you choose the next one, or four crew members, which are more elite. The ship type is going to uh, really uh, dictate what kinds of roles that your crew fulfilled. It could be warriors, they could be medical uh, officers, it could have been a science vessel. Uh, each of these ship types will also give you equipment and other things like bonuses. So if I chose the warrior ship, um, that meant that most of my guys would be soldiers. Now there is a list of types of crew types that could also be chosen with the warship. So uh, things like medical officer, soldier, engineer, uh, um, you can have scientists and veterans. So we heard Julie say that there are no target numbers in this game. And to an extent, what she's trying to say is that there are no calculations to target numbers, which makes things a lot easier. And uh, basically, uh, you have a success number and a target number. And uh, the success number is the minimum number of successes that you need to accomplish a life challenge, uh, such as, you know, poisonous gas that you need to shut off. The target number is the minimum number required for an even result to count as a success. And it is written as you see on the screen with the success number first and the target number second. In this case, uh, two successes are needed, two even successes, and they each have to be passed on a four or over. And that's how it, writ it is written. Uh, in the challenges and this is uh, explained in the scenario section um, challenges challenges are very important in this game you not only have monsters you're going to be dealing with certain challenges like gas leak mm -hmm. right poisonous gas that's mm -hmm. leaking into this room uh, a bomb that's ticking or something mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you have to deal with that challenge in addition to the monsters right. to finish the game mm -hmm. Um, the challenge tests are, of course, the roles. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is you utilize your stats. Your stats are going to tell you how many dice you roll for that particular stat. Mm -hmm. So if I say, let's say, and I'm just throwing this out of that, intelligence four. Mm -hmm. That means I use four dice mm -hmm. for that challenge, anything that involves intelligence, right? Right. So I think that's really cool. That would be in addition to your base stat as well. Right. You have a base stat. Right. Well, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, right. the base stat. But then you do get bonuses. Exactly. So yeah. you get bonus dice right. depending on certain things. Right. Uh, one, uh, one example would be with a combat. When you're doing combat, combat is the same exact thing, successes and failures. Mm -hmm. Your weapons give you dice bonuses. Not just number bonuses. Right. They're dice bonuses mm -hmm. to increase your odds of success. Yes. Yeah. So, very interesting. Interesting and really, really simple. Yes, very simple, fast play. Yeah. Very fast. Yeah. So, very interesting. Um, okay, 
Uh, what else? You wanted to say something about the knowledge shards, I thought? Yeah, the knowledge shards. Um, as you play the game, you may, you may encounter items called knowledge shards, and they can enhance and give you bonuses, but in addition to that, it gives you history. It gives you some additional history of, of the space station, which I find interesting because, of course, that's what. That's, yeah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, there is an example of play in the book. The book gives you plenty of examples. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to say about the book, the artwork. We were talking Incredible. about Incredible. Yeah. yeah. The illustrations are so beautiful. Really, really well done. Um, MJ and I were discussing it earlier, and he mentioned that it's cartoonish, which it, it is, but it's it's drawn very very well there's it's detailed and um just really nice very very nice right yeah that that's one thing i really liked about the book was the mm -hmm. artwork I, mm -hmm. again that kind of almost manga but not you know maybe that's not the best way to describe but it kind but of though i, yeah, I, I of, see why like you a, say that yeah, yeah kind of like a manga like style mm -hmm. artwork i i like that very much um and uh okay so you get examples plenty of examples in the book um, you have, let's see, five stats for each crew member. We'll go over those stats when we play the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll learn more about those. As I said before, the numbers on those base, those base numbers are the numbers of dice you will be using to test for those. So that's very cool. Um, for the crew roster, you want to go to Sar Snarling Badger Studios. And that's where you can get your crew roster for free. Print it out, and that's what you use for your games. Um, and armor. There is armor in the game, so you do get armor bonuses. Mm -hmm. uh, you get plenty of weapons and things to help you out, and equipment. Uh, artifacts that you'll find also. Uh, it's very narrative play, mm -hmm. I think, right? I agree. Yeah. yeah. That would be fun. Yeah. And uh, the knowledge shards, we just mentioned the knowledge shards, I think they're a good gateway to making your narratives, right? Because you can oh, kind of, yeah. yeah, you find those knowledge shards and it gives you a history of, mm -hmm. of that area. Um, cover, there are cover bonuses and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, And the retaining the initiative role, that's something Julie went over. Mm -hmm. You have to see every turn if, you know, after one of your crew members activates, you have to see if you can retain your turn of it if it passes over. Mm -hmm. All right, and here is an example of a board that I set up uh, for this game, okay? And it's a small uh, interior of a section uh, of the spaceship that we are exploring. Okay, and I'm using terrain, scratch belt terrain from my collection in order to uh, design this room. Okay, so uh, here we have a life challenge, which are these uh, big gas leaks, just like Vince Venturella showed in his video on how to play the game. Okay, and uh, we also have here uh, a mutant that's attacking one of the crew, and here's another mutant. Okay, I'm using the Xenomorph. So you're going to use whatever miniatures you have in your collection. I will be using a variety of different miniatures for this game. And uh, yeah, that's it. So it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. The distance between models is what determines whether they are in close combat or ranged combat. The weapon type does not matter uh, when it comes to determining this. Close combat is... Uh, defined as a model being an inch or less away from the opponent model. Anything over an inch is considered ranged combat. Again, the weapon types have uh, no bearing in this. Oh, now we have thunder. <laughs> Welcome to our storm, folks. <laughs> we apologize if, the, if you can hear that. However, we tried to close the window and it's much too hot in this room that way okay okay so it is important then to say that a uh, play 
this game can be played three ways, solo, mm -hmm. uh, it can be played co-op, and also player versus player, or head-to-head. -head. Things will change slightly in player versus player, because uh, the enemies are more, uh, they're going to attack both of you, basically. Right. Uh, so, or can attack both of you. Not all scenarios will have monsters. Some scenarios only have challenges. Right. Right? Uh, physical challenges, like gas leaks or whatever. So, uh, it will depend heavily on the scenarios. Right. And I think you said the scenarios get difficult, more difficult. Yeah, as you go down into the space station, as you explore further down, it gets more difficult. And you, um, you encounter more dangerous situations. More dangerous situations mm -hmm. as you go deeper in. Mm -hmm. So, a great, great concept. Julie and I are working on our first game. We're going to have that here on the channel for you guys. And then you guys can see how the game works. Now, in terms of uh, web support, I want to say uh, this game does have web support. It's very new. Uh, web support is anything like Facebook pages, forums, anywhere where the game is being uh, displayed online. You go to Snarling Badger Studios, you can see uh, three videos that Vince, uh, one video uh, is of Vince giving you a battle report, and uh, there it's very self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vince is very good at describing things. It was a lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, yeah. So I definitely recommend those three videos there on Snarling Badger Studios and definitely visit them for more information on the game. Mm -hmm. You can also see Uncle Adams uh, when he talks about the game in his Sunday show. And uh, he has a couple of videos on his channel to talk about the game. Okay, so mm -hmm. definitely recommend uh, checking that out. For sure. I'm really excited about yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be a new it's game. It's going to be a fun new game to play. Now, this is miniature agnostic. It's not setting agnostic, but it is miniature agnostic, right up my alley. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we will be using a whole range of miniatures to represent our crews, very much the way we do for Stargrave or other games. And uh, when we play the game, you guys will get an idea of what kinds of miniatures we'll use. Uh, probably stuff in... 40k, mm -hmm. right? Old 40k miniatures. We're going to use some Necromunda. We're going to use some Mantic sci-fi miniatures. I think it's going to be great. I agree. Alright, mm -hmm. as far as terrain is concerned, the only thing I'll say with terrain, anything that you have that's sci-fi, sci-fi walls, anything that'll represent the internal workings of a starship. Mm -hmm. I do have a lot of scratch builds on my channel that show how I scratch build starship interiors okay so we have plenty of of, of uh material mm -hmm. here for this game yes we do all right anything else you want to say about this before we conclude no not other than i'm just really excited to get to it let, you know i i want to play let's all right this. yeah let's do this mm -hmm. all right so the game is coming very soon and i want to give julie a thanks thank you for joining me on this spotlight. Thank you for having me. You will see Julie more on future spotlights. And uh, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out a little bit, go check out our Patreon. Patreon. Yep, take a look. Take a look. Patrons get bonus uh, videos that are not on the channel, bonus games, and they also get, second tier patrons get a magazine, about 40 pages, 30 to 40 pages of material, mm -hmm. okay? so Good stuff, guys, good stuff. Go check it out, Scratch Builder Monthly. All right, folks, uh, have a great one. This has been an MJ Gaming Spotlight with Julie. Yay! And now we got to go attend uh, Yoda, our admiral, mm -hmm. before he gets upset. Yes. So. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great one, folks. See you in the next MJ Spotlight. Take care. Bye now.